Now, there are some laws in in chemistry about the there are some laws of the gases which have been carried out on their measurable properties okay and it is it has been found that there is some relation between them so some laws were established obviously based on experiments based on experiments on the measurable properties of on the measurable property of the gases what are those measurable properties those measurable properties are are first of all mass okay i can i can weigh a gas i can know its mass i take an take an empty container vacuumized i put in say some this thing and by a sensitive balance if i measure it i'll be able to know the mass i can also know the pressure how the pressure of a gas is measured is the subject matter of mechanical properties of fluids that you'll be studying in 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 physics okay then volume one of the easiest to to calculate maybe if you if you keep a cylinder or or a cube then it's quite simple to calculate the volume or or a cuboid then it's pretty simple and the temperature and the temperature now experiments were conducted by by scientists experiments conducted by by robert boyle robert boyle okay then charles jakes charles okay jakes charles then hmm gay lussac then avogadro also later dalton okay hmm that we'll soon see but the but the main ones were carried out by these people and the first of them is the is the pressure volume relationship which we call boyle's law so the first is the boyle's law which is nothing but a pressure volume relationship okay now we'll be dealing with these four quantities okay these four so when i say he was experimenting between pressure and volume then what do you think he should be doing he should be keeping the mass and the temperature constant so so while these became variable this he'll have to keep constant correct this we have discussed earlier that if you are trying to find out correlation between any two things out of so many then you have to keep others constant otherwise that's not a correlation correct so so when we go to say volume temperature charles law volume and temperature what will happen he'll have to keep other two things absolutely constant then only he'll be able to understand what is the relation between these two fine fine so so what did he say he said that at constant temperature the pressure of so 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 he starts with that what is constant so so what is boyle's law 
In fact, I'd not like to state it first. Let us try to understand. Let us say I have a syringe. Okay. So you draw the draw the piston of the syringe out, not fully out, to the maximum, and then put your finger here. That means you block the nozzle nozzle. Obviously, without the needle. Okay, you take off the needle and block it, say with a cork or even with your with your, with your thumb, and try to press the press the nozzle, the, the piston. What happens? What happens? You will find that the piston will go down. Correct? It will go down. So let us try to understand this way. Let us say I have a cylinder. It does not go down. It no, it does not go down. Uh -huh. When did I said pura? I said it will go down. So it is something like this. This is your piston. This is movable. This piston is say movable and light. Now what happens if I put some weight over it? So so initially it is like this. If I put some weight over it, what what do you expect to happen? What do you expect? If I put some weight over it, it will go down. So, so if I have some weight over it, it has to go down. If I put some more, it will go down further. This is something that is, that is, it will go down further. This is the movable piston with hardly any friction, but still, still the air inside has to be trapped. It should not be escaping from here and here, right? If it does so, then the whole game is gone. What happens? The mass becomes lesser. So, so but I have said that the mass and the temperature is constant. So now this is something that we can comprehend. We understand. Okay? We understand this. This is a bottle. Okay? I try to press it. It gets compressed. What happens to the air inside? The pressure goes up or no? Yes. yes. How do you know that? If I somehow uncork it, hmm? If it is closed and I am trying to press it, you, you after some time you feel that you will not be able to press it. Why? Why? Because the pressure inside is exactly opposing you. So what has happened? The pressure inside has gone up. It has gone up. And is it equal to the pressure that we are applying? Currently, yes. That's why it is an equilibrium. The equilibrium of particles. Class 11th. Correct? So that's why it is at equilibrium. So this, this compression is due to, due to my, my force actually pressing it. And, and, and what do you think has happened to the volume? The volume has gone down, is it not? Because it has got squeezed. The bottle got squeezed. So the volume has gone down. And this is the experiment he conducted. But the fellow actually found out what is the relation. His credit is what is the relation. So he said if the volume goes down, the pressure goes up or, or if the volume goes down, if the pressure goes up, the volume goes down. Because uh, why I am saying because because somehow I applied some some force and the pressure went up. So volume went down and pressure went up. So I squeezed the container. You can take it any way. It's not uh, see whatever is inversely related. It is both ways, is it not? It's not only one way. 
fine but but how you state that 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 makes makes it important so so what happens he said that at constant for a given mass that means a constant mass of gas and which is at a constant temperature pressure is inversely proportional to the volume so if you try to squeeze it the pressure will go up okay or if you increase the pressure the volume will go 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 down if you increase the pressure okay no if you increase the pressure the volume goes or or you, you try to squeeze it so so the only that means only way to increase pressure is to reduce the volume okay and the only way to to reduce the pressure is to increase the volume okay to increase the volume so so you know if you want to decrease the pressure say say you have a piston and you suddenly try to pull it out after a point it you you'll feel as if as if it's not getting pulled up you know why because the pressure inside has gone down the pressure inside has gone down so so the force on the piston in the opposite direction has gone up understand that means what i am trying to say if you suddenly try to pull it up say 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 the container was was bigger okay the container was bigger and you try to pull it up say say you try to bring it here the piston here what will happen the pressure here will drop now the pressure here drops it means the force here goes becomes less and you are applying some you know so okay so you are applying some some force up and now what happens what happens what happens to to create so so a vacuum is is getting created here okay and what happens the atmospheric pressure that is already acting that becomes fierce more fierce on you why because earlier when the pressure here was higher this was counteracting the atmospheric pressure so it is actually the atmosphere that is forcing you back not this fellow okay he has reduced the pull so the atmosphere has actually increased it understand so that is what is in the net trying to pull you back okay so we will try to come back to the state it started no it depends it depends if it was the normal state and 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 this was getting balanced by this because ultimately what happens ultimately what happens the equilibrium of the particle tells me what see the force here has gone up so earlier the force was this now the force is this so how will that be countered by a force like that and how will the force increase you will later understand that force is equal to pressure into area so if this force has to go up to counter it the pressure inside has to go up is it not so here the pressure has gone up like that so here too the pressure has to go up and then uh, there comes a time when we apply as as much force as we want but it won't go down why why won't it go down why won't it go down at least a gas obviously till you have kind of compressed all the atoms together only then yeah. when when there is no more but you, you, that's a different thing that's a different thing don't don't go into that it won't become a liquid it can become a liquid because there is also temperature which plays a part it's not only pressure okay it is not only the pressure you also have to take into account the temperature so uh, so if it is below critical temperature fine it will it will turn into liquid but liquid or no liquid don't worry about it what happens our exp our experiences either we 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 do not have that great a force or this whole container blasts that's why we feel as if it is not possible to keep on compressing it correct but it is definitely possible to compress it 
till wherever you want okay you apply a stronger and a stronger force and it keeps on becoming becoming a smaller and a smaller volume and that's what he stated in his law so he said <coughs> okay so 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 he said that that after after this experiment we understand that that at a constant temperature at a constant temperature temperature the pressure of a fixed amount of gas of a fixed mass of gas i'll say mass of gas which will translate into into the mole of a gas at a constant temperature the pressure of a fixed mass of gas is inversely proportional to the volume of the gas now it looks quite pedestrian and kind of we feel as if no why uh, i i could have also said it but try to understand the very fact that someone started with with experimenting this okay he started experimenting with it between pressure and volume keeping these two things constant that in itself was a leap of faith try to understand the times are different they are not the same time okay and we understand it very intuitively because we have been taught it over and over again but but a person just sitting like that and you know you have no clue about what gases are and and and, and since you cannot even see them and and suddenly someone someone goes on and tries to formulate a law between them so that is a remarkable feat so don't kind of underrate the fellow because because it is something that is quite quite understandable to us it's very intuitively understandable right so 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 what he said was p is this okay so pressure is inversely proportional to the to the volume at constant mass and temperature okay so so and and we know that somehow somehow whenever this goes away the whenever this goes away a constant comes in so p is this p is equal to k1 into 1 upon v where k1 is the constant of proportionality so he actually means p into v is a which is constant <coughs> pv is equal to k1 which is a constant that means the product of the pressure and volume will always remain constant whatever you do so what does it mean it means that 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 in two situations two different situations when v1 is the volume and p1 is the pressure and when v2 is the volume and p2 is the pressure that means that p1 v1 is equal to is equal to p2 v2 okay all these relationships that we are deriving and will be deriving in next few classes they'll be all they are all for an ideal gas okay 